Good afternoon, sir. Uh, we spoke a great deal about uh, farming issues a few moments ago, and the art world, as we see, is rather fraught. How do you think we could institutionalize funding mechanisms for art and for an art event such as museums? the government level. See, the government, if it chooses, can give a core support to stabilize the finance of the billion. But then for additionalities, they would have to, foundation will have to search with uh, CSR fund or other private foundations or other sources. And now the problem with the the Nalia Foundation is that it doesn't have a course of work. There is no stability, there is a whole uncertainty hanging around. Um, so I think it is important that many components to be uh, take out a core, uh, which the whole procedures, everything can be uh, much more systematic and transparent because government funding would demand certain procedures. But uh, the nature of this enterprise itself is not uh, really amenable to government procedures. Uh, there is a problem there. Uh, therefore, if you can keep away many uh, of the components which, you know, will be much greater flexibility and have a core program, which then should be supported by government. I think uh, we can have an arrangement by which it becomes a permanent feature of government uh, budgets. Is it the nature of uh, is the nature of the political economy of art that uh, government as uh, an institution traditionally is uh, reluctant to invest in art? Uh, very well. Uh, I think Kerala has reached this stage where government will have to manifold increase its investment in art. Uh, because Kerala, the material well being is rising very fast. Uh, we are one of the fastest growing states in India today. Our consumption level is second highest in India. Now, a sort of strategy is being adopted and there is a consensus in the state regarding that of accelerating this growth, which would mean Kerala could become a medium income country. Now, the problem is Kerala is getting hooked on to a kind of consumption culture because as your well-being, economic well-being rises, it is consumerism that is leading the way. Uh, that is, can be disastrous uh, for Kerala culture, uh, for, for Kerala ecology, and society in general. Uh, definitely your consumption levels will have to grow. Uh, but what components of consumption it is not material consumption alone, but uh, your spiritual consumption in terms of the, 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 the ability of population to appreciate art, music, film and so on. Uh, so instead of human beings who are spending their more and more time to earn more and more money, to consume more and more, it's a vicious circle, never ending. Um, uh, we should break out of that. And uh, this can be done only by government investing heavily in, say, schools, colleges, um, or village libraries everywhere, to providing facility for ordinary people they have to have to be music, to learn music and enjoy music, if they have uh, artistic talents to paint, to pursue that. So even if you are not great artists, you should be able to enjoy those cultural products. So we, life is much richer. So my vision of Kerala development uh, today, it was not so 10 years back, but today, 
is that the state would have to increase its investment in the cultural sector. What was done by the last government is not sufficient. I think that is one of the major um, self-criticism that I, as a finance minister, would do. Uh, Kerala should have invested much more. So then, once you think of investing in the cultural sphere, so that it enriches people's life, what are the sectors? One, I think, is school education. Where now music teacher, drawing teacher all disappear. I think that's a very wrong policy. Um, uh, and there must be other extracurricular spheres where children can you know, uh, uh, intervene and get in and try to appreciate art. So that is one. Second is Kerala's vibrant library and uh, art societies, art and sports societies. They have been financially supported much greater level. Uh, Kerala's academies, government academies and so on and third. But fourth one importantly would be uh, a system by which uh, artists, their associations uh, uh, can be supported by government uh, to independently pursue certain missions of theirs which government may not fully understand also. But if you want a um, a liberal society, I think that's the risk that government will have to take. So we need to think, Kerala need to rethink its uh, culture policy to a great extent. Now having said that, today is very, very different. Government funding has been flowing in the only government institutions. It's a very comfortable thing in the sense uh, they will follow procedures everything, and everything. Uh, and uh, the formalities are met. So, a bureaucrat, a politician would be comfortable with that. But anything outside that, everybody uh, is nervous. The supporting the uh, The first question that arises what is the, where is the accountability for public? As if the accountability means uh, sticking to certain rules, or only officials can have accountability. There can be other ways of uh, accountability being established, appropriate to the sector in which that activity is going on. Um, but this is what the way that question of accountability is being raised is denied uh, such a possibility. Um, so that is largely bureaucratic thinking. Okay. Bureaucratic. Secondly, there would be a small section of narrow-minded uh, cultural establishment also. Uh, the friends and so on, but is, the vision is limited. Um, third, I think uh, despite our openness to the cost of the world in terms of economy, Kerala have been by and large, uh, say, particularly when it comes to arts, very limited to Kerala traditions and Kerala artists. Though there are a large number of Kerala's who are outside Kerala, <laughs> I don't think many of them would be known in Kerala. Uh, so all these have contributed to a kind of uh, reluctance on the part of the government supporting this enterprise. Um, in the past government, at least uh, some of us, like uh, the cultural minister or myself, we could understand what was happening and the need for it. I approach it uh, not just from the cultural point of view, which I have been discussing so far, but uh, from uh, the perspective of an economist himself. I think one to make uh, Kochi into a quote unquote world class city and not belong to that tribe which pursues that world class city project. But to raise, make Kochi into a proper metropolis, you need much more recreational and uh, uh, cultural facilities in the city. 
Kochi is a barren city in terms of uh, art and culture, culture I would say. Uh, Chuan and Trishu, Calicut with a much richer uh, background. And therefore this is something uh, macro which has been filled. And therefore government uh, should support these initiatives which are coming in the city. That's one. On the perspective of metropolitan growth in Kochi. And uh, second is that uh, the cultural tourism is very important in terms of Kerala's development. Um, see, uh, tourism can have a lot of side effects, adverse impact. Um, but uh, tourism which would respect our culture, would have one to understand nuances of our culture, uh, I think it has a lot of potential. So, for example, the Kochi Musiris Binari is called. Musiri is a cultural project uh, trying to conserve uh, the uh, more than 2,000 year old cultural heritage of the area around uh, Kochi uh, to serve as monuments, only monuments, the institutions. And uh, also uh, lifestyles, uh, occupations, and so on. Uh, so that uh, a kind of tour to these uh, institutions, or monuments, or performances would give you a kind of kind of rich cross section or longitudinal cross section, and that is a time series vision about how Kerala go. Now in that context, uh, Binale uh, is very, very significant. My rough calculation, I have written it publicly, uh, when there was controversy regarding supporting Binale here, that Department of Tourism, the kind of free advertisement Kerala has got from Binale internationally, far outweighs the money uh, that government of Kerala has given to Binale. So what are we creeping out? <laughs> Just do the calculation. If somebody wants to do, let them measure what New York Times, uh, the space you have received, or other uh, magazines and so on, and calculate the kind of opportunity cost. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I think it makes eminent economic sense to support it, apart from the cultural perspective. We spoke about uh increasingly deepening globalization and its pressures and goals. Uh, you cannot uh, obviously legislate culture. Increasingly there's a tendency to do that. How do you take uh, this out of the ambit of government and uh, uh, put in the necessary resources to uh, help develop a culture which is receptive to art in the way we spoke about? You know, see in this country like ours, government will have to be still the main patron of art and culture. Because the government is resource, okay, public resource. Secondly, if people find some the vision I told about Kerala, well, cultural development is a very important component of development process. Without that, I am convinced we are going to create a monstrosity in Kerala which you can see today in the consumerist culture that is growing up. So as an antidote to it, it is very important that the planning process itself that uh, comes. But then will the government uh, uh, headed cultural divisions with thinking what should be a good drama, what should be a good painting? Uh, no, never. It will be that under such enterprise will be a failure from the beginning. Uh, particularly at this stage, when everything is opening up, uh, it is not possible, viable for government to micromanage things. Government should be uh, should oversee definitely. His support will have to be also selective. Okay, it's not that anybody who comes over can be supported. That's there within the domain of the government. But the philosophy says that uh, you cannot support uh, artists' initiatives. I won't say private. It's not the public versus private. It's artists 
their vision, their aspiration. Um, that is what is matters. Um, there is this public-private uh, dichotomy as well. I would uh, say take national shapes which are done under directly under the government, <laughs> like our Commonwealth Games. <laughs> Lucky they are not holding uh, Binali directly under government. <laughs> or, or our national games in Kerala is all. So what accountability are you speaking about? I don't believe in that. So I think it is very important to give as much artistic freedom and uh, support uh, independent artist initiatives as much as possible. So you went around the Benali. What were your uh, impressions? What were the defining impressions you had once you went around? I don't know if you want to have it recorded. <laughs> I chose it to be. I like the last Benali moment. See, <laughs> I am very frank. Maybe with little Malayali in me speaking out. I don't know. Uh, one, I don't like too much scientism. Scientism. Mechanical things. Look, for example, I, I don't want to criticize any particular artist. You have got all these islands which are going to sink under the global one. Fine. It's good cartography. <laughs> Suppose uh, the artist had put some faces of the people of the island, culture of the their, their fears, everything, something. Okay, then it communicates to me. Otherwise, I'd hire the best cartographer and have the, the islands in front of me. You see, okay, there is no Chinese walls within science, philosophy, art. I agree with all that. But nevertheless, these are independent spheres also. So that's one element. Secondly, the last Binale, it was more going to roots, link between Kochi. And uh, so outside, yeah. okay, or India and outside. Uh, so the, the digging is going on here. The kind of uh, art product based upon the diggings. Uh, so many of them. You know, even installations I like more in last time. Uh, but uh, I haven't seen everything. I couldn't come earlier. But that's only by comparison. <laughs> comparison between last Binale and this Binale. But you take Binale as a whole, both. It opens up people's uh, minds to much larger spectrum of possibilities of artistic expression. Uh, even if you don't enjoy or you understand uh, some of the things, but the fact that strikes you that great artists do things different from you, uh, different from we. So that kind of is a kind of festival which opens up Kerala to a larger world of art. And there is nothing parallel to it happening in Kerala, or I would say even in India. And the whole ambience of this place. Um, I have mean, not been to many Binalis, but Dubai, but it is a aseptic atmosphere. <laughs> Too clean and tidy. <laughs> so the ambience is itself is really interesting. And last year's uh, greatest theme was very intimately linked to the ambience of the place. That's why it became much more enjoyable. Right. Yeah. So, final question. Uh, what do you mind, where do you situate art in the political economy of uh, nation's life? Well, there are two approaches to it. One, art has become a vehicle for investment. Okay, because a, a product of art is unique, it cannot be uh, it won't appreciate. The value will increase with the value to okay. As simple as that. So its only value can only increase. If it's a piece of art which is accepted, 
valley can only increase. Therefore, we have become a, a important speculative commodity, and that's what mainstream part of economics would think about, feel about. Now, with the modern lifestyle coming in, there would be demand for decorative art. I mean, not that everything placed in a wall is decorative, I wouldn't say that, but there is demand for art for any corporate institution or public institutions. Now, by even by law, you have to spend some money on artwork. So that is one demand which is generating. But I am not interested in that. You see, I am not interested in this. As economy grows, our people become wealthier. As more and more the material needs, less basic needs are being met, would they go to root where consumption becomes an end in itself? Or would they take a root where you want to enrich your cultural life more and more? Um, see, it can reach a time with the progression of automation, robotism, robotics and so on, that you may need to work only an hour for meeting your consumption needs. So, not eight hours, one hour, rest of the day is free. What do you do? You consume more material goods and therefore you won't work even harder to get those material goods or would you lie back and enjoy all this art? I think vision of a new human being should be in this way. And therefore, uh, art should be very important. Art in the sense the people being able to appreciate art, enjoy art, should be a very important element of vision of development itself. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.